Hey, it's Melissa with Sincerely Creative Mom. Today we're going to make a Easter wreath with a metal sign that's a different kind of shape that we're going to work out here. Um, and so we're going to start with our 14 inch frame. The, this was a kit, so the kit came with our pancake bundle, the 14 inch, the 10 inch, and the sign extender. It came with the sign, it came with the pipe cleaners, the ribbon for the ribbon tails, the ribbon for the bow, and our roll of mesh here that we kind of already pre-cut, and I'll walk through that in a second. Um, we're gonna work on the 14 inch frame, so I'm gonna set this aside. Y'all, when you get our, our frames, a lot of the time they are tacked together on purpose. So you just wanna poke those through their wood. So just poke them through and they'll come apart nice and easy, okay? So we're gonna start on our 14 inch frame. Um, we're gonna add our pipe cleaners exactly where the hole and the notch coordinate. So wherever there's a hole in a notch, we're gonna add our pipe cleaners there. Um, I've already pre-cut the ribbon and the mesh, and what I'll say to that is there is a video on our YouTube that is specifically for cutting uh, kit supplies. Actually, it could be for anyone, but it's specifically for anybody who's purchased our kits. So if you haven't yet watched that and you purchased this kit, go check out that video first. Lots of great tips there. Um, I am adding our pipe cleaners again right to every place that has the hole in the notch. What I am doing kind of specific is I'm adding or twisting the pipe cleaner closest to the notch. Not inside the notch, like not in here, but right on the wood um, on the top closest to the notch. Now I'm doing the same thing out here so that there's a little extra se separation in the in the um, layers that you'll see coming up here. And so we'll do this part that will help the separation in the layers in the beginning and then at the very um, last layer after we have everything on there's one more extra little tip that I want you to see um, to help again make sure that those layers are separated. So just really quick coming in here putting in our pipe cleaners I'm not making sure, like those don't add up, they're not equal, it's fine. I'm not um, using mo I'm not using much of the pipe cleaner, so we don't need to have, it doesn't matter that one's long, one's short. I just wanna make sure that the pipe cleaner closest to the edge, closest to the edge. So we're going to be making um, a pancake style. Now I've already pre-cut our ribbon, our mesh, and our ribbon. Um, and you'll be able to see, again, in that cutting video instructions, lots of great tips there for you to um, for you to pick up and use, even, again, even if you're not using or purchasing our kits. So for our mesh here, I'm gonna go right up the center and ruffle. Now, if you've never made a wreath before and you purchased this as a kit, it would be beneficial for you to cut a piece. Okay, follow the cutting instructions but cut a piece and use that to practice, okay? Um, it does, it is a, it is a, you know, practice makes perfect kind of thing, but if you practice with a piece that you're gonna put in your wreath, that material does fray. So the more you practice with it, the more it frays. And if you're gonna put that piece in your wreath, then, you know, it's, after a while it gets hard to cover up, which we're gonna do a good job of covering what does fray, but you know there's a certain level um, that <clears throat> might be a little bit harder. Okay, so what I'm doing is I cut my mesh 20 inches long. Again, even though I'm telling you that it's 20 inches long, make sure you watch that video so you can get a really good grasp on ways to cut that will uh, minimize your fraying, what pieces of your mesh go where, because there's a specific way to use them if you wanna also have enough for your 10 inch frame so make sure you're watching that video again it's great even if you didn't purchase a kit from us uh, crisscross nice and tight twist twist now I'm gonna take these and overlap this is what I call a pancake design it's meant made to go between your main door your storm door so that it fits kind of between there most in most cases not all cases but in most cases but even if you don't have that kind of door set up, this would be perfect on any door. 
Um, it is nice and wide, so it makes a nice big statement as far as width, just the depth of it um, is a little different than what you might see elsewhere. So I'm going to go again right down in top on top here. Gentle. I'm not, once I put my mesh in place, I'm not touching it, moving it, playing with it, nothing. It just goes in and stays. And I'm just going to overlap here nice and easy. And then overlap here. Now, again, it is 20 inches. And you might think, oh, I can, it, you're, you know, she's overlapping and I don't have to do that much. I could cut it shorter. So I've tried that. Um, I do like it 20 inches because it does overlap on purpose and it helps to make it look um, fuller, not so much see-through. And it helps to, for this piece of the mesh, mesh to catch on this piece to kind of hold it in place. And it, I mean, 19 inches, not bad, but small, shorter than that, smaller than that, um, it's not, it's not looking the way you see here. So. Um, 20 inches and plus 20 inches will give us, if you cut the whole row at 20 inches, it'll be enough for both the 10 inch frame and the 14 inch frame. Or if you're not using the 10 inch frame, it'll give you enough for one and a half of your 14 inch frame. So, you know, also budget friendly ideas there. Everything come with a reason uh, when I'm, when I'm creating for sure. I wanted the the uh, overall design to be budget friendly for myself to make and of course um, a little more budget friendly for my customer to purchase as well. I'm just going right down on top there. Again, once you get your mesh in place, try not to touch it, play with it. The more you touch it and play with it and move it around, the more it will fray. We have um, our kits are available to our email list first. I'll tell you how to join there in just a second. Other um, uh, to our email list first, and then after a few hours of them, of our email friends shopping, um, if it didn't sell out, I do list it on our Facebook. So you do have a chance, even if you're not on our email list. But uh, to join our email list, you can go to learnfrommelissa.com. Learnfrommelissa.com. You put in your email email address there and then actually that'll add you right to our list but then on the next screen it'll bring you to a spot where you can click and it gives you a list of all of our favorite our our favorite suppliers our favorite um, tools our favorite um, some of our favorite free tutorials that we have um, some really cool ones actually uh, a list of our social medias, a list of any of your classes we have coming up, so many things. So it's learnfrommelissa.com. These ribbon tails are 14 inches long. I have two of them that are two and a half inches wide. I'm going to scrunch right up the center, okay, form it out towards me and set it right down in there on top. Now I'm not going to leave them like this, but I'm going to leave them like this for a moment, okay. Now there is no up and down on this ribbon. It's just, <clears throat> it's always, so I didn't have to worry about anything going upside down. And not all ribbon, but some ribbon I can kind of maneuver and make so that everything looks like it's going the right way. Uh, some I can't, but. And then also I always say put your favorite ribbon on the top. And this happened to be I mean, I love the polka dots because they go with the bunny so cute, but um, I did want to see a lot of those Easter eggs and the, the polka dots in this case, even though they're so cute, I wanted them to kind of be a background and mostly because the sign is polka dot. So I didn't want the whole wreath to look like polka dots. I just wanted it to look like the whole wreath had polka dots. Um, and I did that by putting that second ribbon underneath and you'll see in just a moment when I'm um, uh, fluffing them out here. So nice and tight. Everything comes out towards the edge. All those ribbon tails come out towards the edge. I'm going to take my wire cutter, pick it up once and cut off all this extra. I don't need it. 
you could actually leave that on there, but just for the sake of, I don't want it there, I'm gonna move it. Okay, so from here, you wanna push down, push that in, push down. That kind of will secure it all in one place. And I'm gonna pull that up and apart, pull it up and apart. So do those two things, pull it up and pull it apart. So I'm getting to see a little bit more of that Easter egg there and kind of muting the, pi the polka dots just a little tiny bit. Push that down, up and down, side to side. This is gonna be really cute. This kit is actually sold out. It did sell out to our email friends. Oh, this one might have been posted. I had a lot of these. Not all the time do I have as many as I did this one. I can't remember whether I had 20 or 30 of these. I can't remember. Anyway, pull it apart, up and down, pull it apart, side to side. Both of those motions. The polka dots are so cute. And again, I want to keep that pattern. So I'm doing polka dots, eggs, polka dots, eggs, polka dot eggs, polka dot eggs, so that um, it's really easy to look at and kind of goes, it flows, everything looks like it's supposed to be there. And, and sometimes um, you all send me text messages and like the eggs will be touching and so therefore the polka dots will be touching. That makes it very choppy, I feel like. It makes it very choppy to look at, very choppy on the eye. Now, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna take this and move it out of the way for here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in right on top. Now some of these pieces, or one of these pieces, I think this piece, maybe that piece, um, and I cut the whole entire roll and one was a little short. Okay, one, I'm just gonna see where it was so I can find it. Show you when I put it in there, make sure I'm pointing it out. Yeah, that one's a little short. Okay, that one's a little short. We're gonna put that one in last. But I wanna show you how, so the roll itself ended up being a little short. I cut all the, the first six pieces went for the 10 inch, and then the next six pieces went here, and then the last six pieces are going on the inside. I did that on a, on a, on a scale on purpose. Again, watch that um, cutting video and you can see and understand a little bit more why. Um, <coughs> But everything that goes in the center has is going to be overlapped. There's going to be more to it. And so on the outside, I really need that to be full. So anything that's a little bit end, ends up shorter, it's okay that it goes on the inside. This isn't our short piece, but um, you'll see. I'm going to put that one in just a little bit different. Now this is a fabric, it feels like a fabric mesh, so it's a little softer on the touch. It's a little softer to use, it's a little softer on my fingers. It's a little nicer. It is nice and thick. And I've never used such a light color mesh on a pancake wreath before. I don't think, I mean this is a lot of white going on and it looks so cute. Nice bright, Fresh. I love the pastels, of course. And the sign was had a lot of white in it, so I knew, um, you know, if I put any other darker color mesh, um, not that it wouldn't look bad, but this would just look so much better. So again, ruffling right up the center as best as I can even though this is catching here. I try not to, if I can keep my fingers on the mesh and keep ruffling, I try to do that. I try not to lift off. Um, just, I just try not to. Just try to keep my fingers there. Now, um, have you noticed, 
here on this layer, these pieces here on the inside are completely overlapping each other, okay? So whereas these outside pieces are barely touching here, where these inside pieces are definitely overlapping. That's doing a really good job of covering our frame. This is always the part where I say, our frame is our patent pending frame. Um, it is based on our pancake wreath design. So very specific with the 12 twist ties um, and the notches that help keep our pipe cleaners in place. Um, so no one loves this frame more than I do. Okay, I always say that. No one loves the frame more than I do. I love this frame. Um, it is so versatile. It does not only make this design. I've made some pretty big designs uh, on this frame. Specifically and more recently, a beautiful big uh, cross design that had some purple florals, a nice big cross. It was beautiful. Uh, definitely, I think it was 20, measured 28 inches wide and nine inches deep, I think. It was huge. Um, so not this, this design isn't the only thing that can be made. Um, either way, your customer for sure doesn't want to see the, the frame. So we have to do our best to make sure we're covering it up. And I think with this layer um, of mesh, we've done a really good job even before we add the, the sign and the bow and all the rest of that stuff. So. Um, all right, so the last piece is going to go in, I showed you, it's about 17 inches, so it's a few inches short. I'm going to put it in a little bit differently. When I put these in, I put them in kind of side to side where the opening is kind of on the top and on the bottom. I'm going to put this one so that the opening is kind of on the side, so that ruffle still has the pretty part here, and it still has the pretty ruffle here, instead of it being those open ends. I'm going to show you just what I mean in just a second. Um, of course, I rolled it up, and now it's... There we go. Okay, so I'm going to ruffle again right up the center. Nothing different here. Nothing different. It's just three inches short. Okay, it's just three inches short. And it's the last piece of the roll. So it doesn't quite expand the way the others do, which is fine. I want this nice pretty piece to be showing and not necessarily care about the inside because, again, the inside we're going to completely cover up. But it's the outside that I want that ruffle to still be nice and pretty and smooth. So I'm going to twist that nice and tight. And then I'm still going to do this little overlap of what we have left. Okay, but just it's going to leave that pretty side here. Now you see it is 17 inches, and I was just talking about how, you know, the smaller. Um, the the mesh is, it doesn't quite do what I want to. It doesn't quite do what I want to, but it is very close. So then from here, we're going to add our mesh, I'm sorry, ribbons. Again, 14 inches on the ribbons. I cut them. Everything goes in facing outwards. We have one more teeny tiny step that's going to help us with our separation and layering here, because you see that is you know, right on top of each other, kind of. We only have a little bit of separation here. I have one more quick layer that's got a quick tip that's going to help us with that layer separation. Again, the first one being where you tie your twist ties. Very important. Okay. Going in nice and tight. Scrunch up the center. Form it so everything is facing out towards you. Put it right down in there, nice and tight, crisscross, twist, 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 twist. Nice and tight. Nice and squished. Out towards you. Put it right down in there, right to where that, don't let it just, don't let it just float in there, okay? Put it right down in, nice and tight. Crisscross, twist, 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 twist. There we go. Nice and tight. Now I want to make sure that that's nice and tight, and I'm twisting about seven or eight times so that when I do that lift up and spread apart thing, um, it doesn't come undone. 
right? I want to make sure that it stays in place. There we go. So our last step, our last tip to make those layers be a little more distinct, okay? Again, I'm not going to touch them, but <clears throat> so here's our first layer. The little one thing is I'm going to push this down. Remember I pushed on the outside, I pushed it straight down to really kind of keep it in place. This time I'm going to push it down and in. Down and in. So I'm going to push that down and watch this. I'm going to push it in. So it just really brings it out a little bit more. And I was doing that and I just never really realized that I was actually doing that and that it was a step. But it really is a step. Okay, so I'm going to go down and in. So cute. Again, not playing with all that ribbon on the outside. I'm waiting until the end. So down and in. This is so cute. So I've made the, I've made, over the last couple of days, I've made a couple of our Easter kits in spring. I, I don't know, I, 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 maybe it's the colors, maybe I'm ready for the this. It's, they're so cute. I did one that was um, Easter boots. I'm sorry, rain boots. It was so cute. And then I did one um, that had um, little trucks, like happy, happy Easter, happy spring trucks. Oh, that was so cute. I don't. I think it's just the spring colors. We right now we're getting dumped on with snow. Just cute with the pastel, and this has a little bit of the a uh, little glittery in the polka dots. It's just really cute. It's just really really cute. Again, this was a kit. This one is actually sold out, but this was a kit. So, so, so cute. Again, I'm just going to not touch those. I'm going to try to not touch those. All right, I'm going to place our bunny. Um, I did prep the sign ahead of time, so you can see that again on the cutting instructions. It's been sitting there for a while. Oh, yeah. Nice and cute there. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. I'm going to be able to grab those in. Perfect. That's, that's so cute. Okay. Um, <laughs> so cute. Okay, this ribbon for our tails are a little bit longer than I normally do. Okay, normally um, I have this, the ribbon for the... Normally the ribbon for the bow is wrapped only four times. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it should be five. And so um, it's going to allow me to have longer tails so I can match the bunny, right? Now, I totally could put one right here and, and just put my the center of my bow here and put it right here. But I'm just going to put it up a little bit higher and have my tails coming down. It's going to be super duper cute, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, instead of it being 7 inches, I'm going to make it, I think, 14, no, 10, 12. 12 inches. Yep. 12 inches on the tail. And then 6 inches on the loop. So this part is the same, but the tail is just a little bit longer. Okay. 6 inches on the loop. Pull it apart. Twist. Loop. Pinch, twist, loop, pinch, and twist. What I say it was, I said 12 inches. You could probably go uh, even 15 inches, I think. 12, it could be definitely be 14 for sure. Anyway, um, on this one, all my tails are going to go the same way. Okay, all my tails are going to go the same way for this bow. Okay, 
where's my this here so because I started with a 12 I'm going to keep that 12 inch going but you could definitely be a little bit longer okay all right so next I'm going to come in super cute on the colorful eggs and the bunnies I'm going to start with the tail coming down because you see the bunnies are going one way so I'm going to start with the tail going down and I'm going to put this layer in just a little bit different okay just a little bit different so we're learning another variation of our bow here all right so we're going to come in another a little bit shorter perfect pinch twist loop pinch twist loop okay pinch and twist so it's still going to come in like this oh no just kidding I have to cut this off because now it's going to go upside down I don't want it to go upside down right I do not want it to go upside down so I'm going to put that in there okay the side this this bottom loop is going to come over to this side now it's going to go here this is going to go over here this is going to go over there see we're starting to form this different kind of bow here and I can just cut here match this pinch here and then I'm just going to cut off so that doesn't you can't see that I don't want you to see that in our bow so now your tails are both coming down and they're going the right way okay so there's that so again, just a little tiny bit different in the bow, just a little tiny bit different. This one, I love, this is nice and thick. Super nice ribbon. Okay, again, I'm gonna come down, right? Making everything just a little bit shorter still. Everything a little bit shorter than the last. So nice and thick though, this is nice and thick. Pinch, twist, loop. Pinch, twist, loop, pinch, and twist. Okay, all the tails coming the same way on purpose. I'm going to put this one over here this way. This is going to go this. So we're starting to fill out our bow here, you see. Cutting our length here. Super cute. And then the last one, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with this side. Okay, because now again we have the one directional. So I'm gonna start with the other side of the ribbon. So I'm gonna start there. Now this one does have a little loop in the center. So it's about two or three inches. It's usually about three inches. So I'm going to start with my pinch, twist, loop, pinch, twist, loop, pinch, twist, my loop. However, my pinch, I'm going to cut this off because I don't want it to go in the front, and if I take it down to the end, to the bottom, it's going to be upside down. So I'm going to cut that one off too. Don't panic. Okay. No one panic. And that one's going to go up. This one's going to go to this side. This one's going to go to this side. See how I did that? And this one's going to come down. Okay. Now actually, it'd be great if I could put this one, this tail, first, so I don't end up seeing that little edge, that little extra part there. Okay? 
Where'd our other loop go? Oh no! Oh, goodness. I was like, oh no. I knew there was a loop there. Okay, that one's gonna go to this side, that one's gonna go this side. These are gonna come down, okay? Perfect. Took me a second. So we have all of our tails coming down for a nice big feel for a bow. All of our tails are coming down. They're all going the right way. We did cut two because they're one directional. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna lift off here nice and tight, nice and tight. Come up from the bottom, I'm gonna lift off. Y'all, if you're just watching me for the very first time, I have pretty big carpal tunnel. And so I use our Easy Bow Maker to help me hold the layers in between. I can clearly, you can see I can make the layers in my hand um, the proper way. However, I can't hold it all at once because that, I, that my hands start to scream at me a little bit for. So um, I have to, you know, figure out a way. I'm not making excuses. I say I can't make bows. I just got to find a way. So I use the Easy Bow Maker to help me out. Okay. So I'm going to hold that behind here just like that. Make sure our tail comes. And then I'm going to Pull our center up just like that. Make sure all of our tails are coming down. And then once our bow is actually in here, I can really make it look like it is supposed to be. But there we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to set this aside for just a second so I don't have to play with that too much twice. And take our sign. Now, I did, I guessed on this since I did it ahead of time and I prepped the sign ahead of time. I did guess. So we're going to see how this turns out as far as where to attach. If all else fails, I do have the center, um, this little thingy here to help me if I need it. But we do have this going on. All right, the goal. The goal for me in the pancake style is to always cover four. One, two, three, four. That's the goal. Does it always happen? Ooh, sometimes like this shape might, you know, be um, tricky, but we're going to try really hard. So I know that I'm going to try to cover those perfect. The little cheeky is going to cover this one. And then the ear is going to cover that one. It worked out really nice. And we have two spots left that we have to cover with the bow. So I'm good with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just feed these in. Okay, I'm going to feed them right in to the, through the mesh into the frame. And I'm going to take our, our pan, uh, what's it called? Pipe cleaner and attach that around the... Take our pipe cleaner, attach it around the frame to hold uh, to attach our sign. This is the trickiest part. Getting that pipe cleaner to feed through, and I mean the toughest part. All right, I'm going to start with the other pipe cleaner side because it's, this is, the mesh is very thick. There we go, there's one. Also, you see my hands messing up that ribbon? Another reason why I don't, this is a perfect example. Can you see that? That pipe cleaner grabbed one little piece of that mesh right on the end of it drives me bonkers. The the pipe cleaner is a is two wires twisted together. It never fails. Ever never never. It never fails. It always catches on part of that mesh drives me crazy. Okay, those are both through. I'm 
those are both through, but I am going to um, tighten this so that it doesn't go anywhere. I just want to make sure that part doesn't move. So I actually use the notch here to help me keep this from moving, although when I do put it around the frame, the pipe cleaners, they usually don't move, so I don't have to usually worry about that. All right, so I want to make sure that that covers both of those. Good. And then my cheeky, it's got a, that is his cheek, right? Got to cover that. And then the ear, got to cover this. Perfect. So then this ear is where I have it attached. It's going to work out good where I have it attached. As long as I can get that mesh. Hardest part is getting that. Ooh, that one went through easy. Getting that ribbon or that pipe cleaner to go through is the hardest part. Ooh, I don't know what was wrong with the other pipe cleaner. That just caught on everything. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect here, perfect there, perfect there. Okay, perfect. Doing the same thing. Making sure it's nice and tight. Now, this one. No notch, no nothing. I'm just gonna, there's nothing to help me keep it there. So I'm gonna go nice and tight. And then it's not gonna move. Okay. So hide that underneath there. Not moving. Okay. Perfect. Now we'll play with all the ribbons in just a moment. We're gonna do the same thing with our bow. We're gonna attach our bow the same way, rather. And we're gonna put our bow kind of right up here at the top put them right next to us. So cute! Um, so my top is going to go right here. I'm going to attach my, because it's kind of big, I'm going to try to get in right through here. Now, yours might be different when you're making this. When you're making your kit, it might be different. But that's where I'm going to go, so I'm not even with, well, I guess I am kind of even with his head. But I'm doing the same thing, putting that mesh, I'm sorry, pipe cleaner through the mesh. Trickiest part of the whole thing. Once it's in, I can shift it. Once it's in. Once I have it attached. There we go. I'm doing the same thing, attaching that to the frame. So we have a nice different bow here for this one. Um, and we had to make it a little bit different because of the shape of the sign. Super cute polka dot sign. And then also we wanna make sure that um, our tails come down. We have our good placement on the ribbons from the bow. Where'd we go? Here we go. And I'm not covering up the bunny too much. It's okay that I overlap him a little bit. It is okay. Um, don't don't fret. Don't worry. But I don't want to cover him up too much or her up, whichever. Too much, right? So stinking cute. Pull those tails apart so you can see all the tails. So cute. So cute. So cute, y'all. This is darling. So cute. The last thing I'm going to do is go around the whole frame. So now you have yourself a nice big bow. Go around the whole frame, moving out all the ribbons and placing them, making sure that they are, no one's hiding. You can see everyone. Those tails are nice and straight coming out. Okay, nice and straight. Nothing is over, is, you know, hiding. It's directly underneath from the other ribbon. Everything you can see. <coughs> okay, it's okay that's overlapping a little bit, but we do want to make sure that they are separated. And you can see everything. See how this one kind of went back right over? We want to make sure, at least for the picture, 
that we have a nice separation there. There we go. Now once it's on your door, of course, um, especially if it's on a door that you're using or your customer is using, that suction when they open up that door will move those ribbons. How stinking cute is that? Let me just, oh, don't mind my mess, y'all. Look at how cute that is. My goodness, those ribbons, the polka dots, the bow, so cute. So, so cute. Y'all, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for consuming our videos. Thanks for commenting, asking questions, all those things. We're happy to have you. Again, if you go to learnfrommelissa.com, not only can you find um, a list of so many great resources, you can also find our phone number there. If you have any quick questions that you need to ask or would like to know, you can always text us. Um, I'm happy to be helping and responding as best as I can. This turned out super cute. It, again, this was a kit. This one is sold out. We do have others available. Um, you can find the link to get to our wreath kits again over at learnfrommelissa.com. You'll put in your email address there and then the next screen you'll click on the button and it'll give you the whole list. So thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, until I see you again, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye y'all.